Hello, um, should we just you know, settle in a little bit? So my name is Natasha Ryans, um, Councillor Natasha Ryans. I'm the Chair of uh, the Sustainable Communities and Overview and Scrutiny Panel. Thank you very much for, for attending tonight. Um, just to say this is our first meeting um, of the year, so uh, I think it's customary for us to kind of go around and introduce everybody and, and everybody say what ward they represent and who they are. So, Thank you, I'm Councillor Dan Holden, Hillside Ward and Vice Chair of this panel have been for the last few years. I'm Councillor Brendan Fraser, I'm for the Ward and I'm subbing for Councillor Monday. Uh, Councillor Jerome Stanford, Fixed Marsh Ward. Uh, Councillor Dan Butler, Abbey Ward. Yeah. Councillor Owen Pritchard, Griffith Green. Councillor Anthony Sanford, Dundonald. Councillor David Dean, Dundonald. Councillor Tim Byers, Grey Community Ward, with here in my capacity as cabinet member for adult social care and family Ms. Lee, Director of Environment and Regeneration. Kath James, uh, Interim Assistant Director for Public Protection. Ben Stevens, Head of Parking Services. Hi, Dr. Uh, and just to say, uh, we are filming tonight, so if you don't want to be filmed, please let us know and um, we'll let you sit somewhere where you're, you're not in line with the camera. Um, just to say, uh, again, this is our first meeting, uh, I, um, this is my first time chairing, so forgive me if I refer to Rosie and to Daniel, if we've got lots of more experience finally, um, throughout the meeting. But just because this is our first meeting, I think it's good for us to just have a kind of uh, look at our expectations of each other and, and what we can hope for over the coming the coming meeting. So, uh, for the panel members, I hope that you'll be respectful of each other and anyone presenting and speaking here tonight. Um, we're here to be a critical friend of the council and not to reenact the Hunger Games. Um, anyone observing, uh, the, anyone observing the meeting? Uh, meeting tonight. Thank you so much for playing your part in our local democracy, but please don't um, interrupt in any way and be respectful of members, guests and speakers. And in return I will do my best to uh, be respectful of you, your contributions and your time here. Um, so, without further ado, if I'm not missing anything else, um, I'll crack on. So, are there any apologies for absence? Uh, sorry, yeah, so Aiden uh, Monday uh, is signed by Brenda. Okay. Um, any declarations of pecuniary interest? Uh, minutes from the previous meeting, are they a uh, true and accurate record of the previous meeting and any matters arising? Uh, yes. Okay, a um, couple of matters that I highlighted when I was reading through this on page two. Um, it ref I don't know if this it says and um, the panel should request additional information about the lift. Um, I think we would be to move this to a different meeting, so so that's one thing that's gonna be highlighted. And then page three where it says resolved, uh, the director agreed that the pump process for improving environmental permits will be reviewed. Um, I was just wanted to find out when or when that's likely to happen. So uh, we're working on that revised proposal uh, and it's with our legal colleagues at the moment just to ensure we're working with us. Okay then, uh, so we'll move on to uh, agenda item number four, which is our parking consultation. Um, so I will uh, well, how it will proceed, we'll start with um, Chris introducing the report just for a couple of minutes. We'll then hear from the speakers um, and members of the, of the public. Uh, Chris will then answer any of those points and then we'll move to the panel to, to have further discussion. So, Chris, over to you. Thank you. So, I won't spend 
too long, Chair, because principally this evening we're here to, to listen because this is, as you, we're all aware, pre-decision scrutiny. So it's as much to report on the results of the consultation but also to hear the views before this goes in front of Cabinet. But I'll just make a few points. I mean, the first one is that uh, hopefully no one can be in any doubt about the fact that London's air quality is a very significant public health issue. And that's been rehearsed in uh, several previous reports that have been in front of Cabinet and scrutiny over the last six months uh, and has been well rehearsed. And the link between car use and air quality has also been evidence. Uh, and the link between uh, public health issues such as diabetes and obesity uh, and how that can be prevented and helped uh, with active transport has also been dealt with extensively elsewhere uh, and in reports that have been brought here. So it's quite clear that reduced car use uh, and increased active travel can have a significant and beneficial impact on, on health. Uh, and there is also some evidence set out in this report that uh, supports the view that this is also potentially good for the high street as well uh, and retail. Uh, and I know that's one of the significant issues for business and trying to get that link between car use supporting the high streets in difficult times, also so protecting air quality is quite a difficult balance to achieve. We had over 3,000 responses to the consultation, and um, that's a, a small minority of those residents who have uh, controlled parking zone permits, but nevertheless it was a very substantial response to the consultation, so we're in no doubt that this is of huge interest, and in some parts of concern, but also support for uh, the proposals that have been put forward. Numerous issues uh, were raised throughout that consultation period and those uh, have been reflected upon and have influenced changes in the report that's here uh, and proposed to be brought forward to Cabinet. Um, particularly, we believe that the P-Town link, the link between transport accessibility and parking charges is appropriate, but that some zones were in the wrong tier. Uh, and we're proposing to amend that uh, with the change in the council members. And we heard very clearly from business and others uh, about the potential impact uh, on business, in Wimbledon in particular, uh, and two particular off-street car parks are proposed uh, to be uh, changed in terms of the evening flat rate fee, which will reduce the cost to motorists using those. Moving to the end, it's worth noting that our charges have barely changed over the last 10 years, uh, and for some of our charges they haven't changed at all in that 10 year period. So over that period we have almost, because of the cost of inflation, we've encouraged people to use their car more, um, and that point um, can't be, um, we can't continue with that approach because there's a, a perverse incentive to continue polluting. And even after these changes, if they are agreed, um, we will still be very much mid-table uh, and at all about, uh, at all below the average uh, for many of these charges across London. Uh, and many of my colleagues that I talk to and uh, in London, other local authorities across London are in the process of changing their charges. The big question, will it work? A lot of residents raise concerns about uh, will this have any impact? And we know that much of the traffic coming through Merton is through traffic. Uh, I read today that 40% of the traffic in, 60% of the traffic in Wimbledon is through traffic, which does mean that 40% is stopping traffic uh, in Wimbledon. We can only deal with the vehicles over which we have control, uh, and that means that unfortunately there are some aspects of the polluting vehicles that we can't deal with, but we're seeking to tackle and use our powers as robustly as we can for those things that are within our control. Uh, will it work? Um, time will show. Uh, price is a recognised economic tool to manage demand and we're seeking to use that appropriately. Uh, but we will endeavour to keep uh, these charges under review uh, and adjust them over time in order to seek to ensure that we strike that right balance. We're not acting in isolation and this approach is consistent with the Mayor's Transport Strategy and other actions that we're taking to support the right type of travel which is supporting the expansion of car clubs, the use of electric vehicles with more electric vehicle charging points, investment through the lipping, cycling infrastructure, and so on and so forth. Uh, some of that's set out in the report. Um, and just to emphasize that final point around using the powers that we have uh, and uh, recognizing that some powers sit with the mayor and the national
national government, uh, I'll leave it there, Chairman. I'm surrounded thankfully by uh, a range of colleagues who are able to answer uh, various questions and things. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we're just going to move on to our speakers now. Just to pre-warn you, we are going to limit it to three minutes each. And uh, please don't make me cut you off, but I'm afraid I will. Um, so uh, yeah, keep an eye on, on the time. Our first speaker is uh, Sarah Shah. Hmm. <laughs> Told that the scheme is that's being proposed is bold. It's a word I've heard over and over again. But what it does tell me is that bold means that you deem the health of those in the west of the borough as being more important than those in the east of the borough. Um, judging by the um, the scheme that you're proposing in only increasing their their um, rates by five to twenty pounds. So by making no extra public transport provisions on providing cycling or other infrastructure by saying it's okay to keep driving in the east versus west. It means you don't care about human life and you don't care about children in the east of the borough. increase the charges on one side of the borough and not on the other side of the borough if it is indeed air quality that you want to improve. If you do want to reduce car ownership. Sorry, I'm going to make you this before you do any of that sort of thing. It would have been bold to stop a school application on one of the borough's most toxic air sites instead of waving it past with a party whip in tow. It would have been uh, bold to immediately set up air quality monitoring for the primary school next door, which six months on, nothing has absolutely happened. It would have been bold not just to reduce the car parking over Christmas, but to scrap it altogether. It would have been bold to ban applications to turn front gardens into parking drives. That is still happening to this day. You care about the environment? I don't think so. It would have been bold to grab TFL by the horns and say it's unacceptable still to have dirty buses on our mountain road. Well, Putney did it. Why are we so weak in comparison? Um, it would have been bold to really roll out the anti idling campaign and not spend so much time taking photos outside St Mary's school that you actually missed all the drivers. It would have been bold to include air quality measures in planning applications rather than use the same air quality consultant known to boroughs to pass to toxic air applications from schools. It would have been bold to be honest and declare incompetence at recording the emissions incident at the Wandle River, which led to an internal review and which you chose, not to mention at the annual performance review just a few days ago for the Joint Regularity Services Committee. It would have been bold 
to say you're going to actually do something about the cycle lanes. I'm just scooted over from Wimbledon. The roads are atrocious. I almost got knocked down because I had to go onto the road. You're saying you have nothing in your power to do except to increase charges on one side of the borough versus the other. I think that is atrocious and ludicrous. Where's the evidence that those who live nearer to higher public transport facilities don't actually use it? Where did you get that inference that actually people who own cars west of the borough don't actually use their public transport? There's absolutely no evidence. Um, why is it that the councils, 50% of free parking permits belong to council workers? I would like to understand that. Um, and as for the action, the air quality action plan that you are all so proud of, 70 action points. How many of you have actually read them? I, can, I don't have... Sorry, time. that's... I've given you... Sorry, it's 30 seconds. Sorry. I, I just mentioned a few numbers on the action plan. Number sorry, 5, number 8, number 16, number 22, number 23, number 25, number 28, number 31, and number 38. None of them include I'm sorry, it's time to stop now. It's time to borough. stop now. It's time to stop now. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your contribution. Please take your seat. And your next speaker is Tony Attle. And hopefully the building will stop. Um, I live in Toynbee Road in SW20, where I've been a resident for 25 years. As you may know, permits were due some years ago. At the public consultation meeting, I emphatically voiced my disagreement with many other residents. At the time, we were promised that the parking charge was only to cover the council's expenses, and although it was annoying and an inconvenient conclusion, I did accept it as reality. However, the proposed parking permit increases are totally unacceptable. In my road, the current charge for a half-day pass increases for £1.50 to £3.50. That's approximately 173% rise. The full-day pass is currently £2.50, going up to £5. That is 100% rise. With the current cost, it is acceptable to take a hit if you only need it for a couple of hours. But with the increases, this would make much more of a consideration. In turn, I believe people would try and chance it more, thus increasing penalty charges, unless this is also part of the plan. I don't know how this rise is justified. I understand that prices need to increase with inflation, but this is not reasonable. In this situation, it's only going to be the residents who suffer. I also wonder how many committee members are going to be affected by these changes, as whether well the residents, how you can possibly see it as fair, and why it needs to happen at all. For the council, it's a win-win financial situation, but the substantial cost and suffering will be for the residents who have no choice. This is a stealth tax, plain and simple. The council is not a business trying to make profit and it should not have fund other areas of council expenditure which are underfunded. This will also have a, neg have a negative impact on the appeal of selling property in the area, as parking is always a contentious issue. Annual resident parking permits have also substantially risen, again it's unacceptable. I do think there should be a public meeting organised to let residents vent their opinions and disbelief in such an unfair proposal on a much broader scale and also be able to ask direct questions. In the interest of transparency, I would like to know how much money it costs for the parking administration for our road. Bearing in mind, we pay for parking permits if you have an income from that, and the parking informants officers, I'm sure, make enough in parking fines to sustain their wages. Since I wrote my response to the consultation, I found out this plan was to do with air pollution. I'm mystified to see how this is a justification. In fact, if people are trying to avoid these exorbitant prices the pollution of people driving around to find alternative parking spaces surely makes this reason a nonsense. I trust the committee has listened to what I have said, as well as the other 3,000 people who have responded to the consultation. I respectfully ask that these proposals are dropped and any future price rises only reflect reasonable and justified increases. Thank you. Thank you. Two minutes 42. Thank you very much. Bye time. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anything we can do about the bank? This is, this is, this is okay. Okay, so we've got um, Helen Clark Bell, please. Uh, 
Um, I'm Helen Clark-Bell, Chief Executive of Love Wimbledon, uh, here representing the businesses of Wimbledon Town Centre. Um, Wimbledon has always had a policy to support air quality proposals, so we are absolutely um, um, completely aware of the issues that air quality issues present. However, I still am in awe of the fact that this uh, proposal does not actually directly have any objectives that are going to be measurable with regards to improving air quality. We have had a strong response, and it's overwhelmingly actually not supporting of the proposals, but very little change has been presented in the proposals, the revised proposals that we see tonight. Figures such as 80% disagreed and 72% disagreed has still not made any change. In fact, the only town, town centre change has been reduced. The St George's Road and Queen's Road car parks were going to be offered as free from 6 to 11. They've now been put flat rate of £2. Why is this flat rate not applied, applied to all of the London Borough Burn Council car parks? St George's Road is not, a uh, car park is not a safe or pleasant environment, and Queen's Road is just not as accessible. The street lighting around that area is very poor. The 20 minute free bays that are referred to, food delivery bikes are monopolising those on Wimbledon Station. We know that. It is currently trying to be dealt with, um, but that is really through our lobbying and our pressure. So they are being blocked. There are a number of other 20 minute free bays outside Fulquick, but we need others in the town centre if this is going to be of any assistance. So I have suggestions on where those might work to support the small independent businesses in the town centre that these parking charges are really going to have an impact on. The other proposal is EV charging points. They are not in the town centre. You've got an ideal opportunity here of introducing some within the car parks. They are not mentioned at all. There is one application on St George's Road at the moment, which we are welcoming, but that is the only EV charging point in the town centre. We refer to a clean air zone in new proposals. Yes, now, let's do it. That is absolutely one of the things that would have a measurable impact right now. Why are we waiting on that? The ULES expansion, has that been actually considered by the Merton Council of exactly what impact that's going to have? We are outside of that ULES expansion zone, so that guess what? All the buses that are currently driving around in that zone are going to get pushed out to us. Our air quality will get worse. The anti idling campaign is weak to say the least, I'm afraid. The signs are the size of a postcard and cannot be seen from the road. The taxi rank is completely overranked. Somebody has to deal with the number of idling taxis that queue up on Alexandra Road. The doctor's bike scheme that's being proposed, they are a nightmare. We had four dumped in the town centre last week, right in the middle of the pavements, having a very detrimental impact on particularly those that um, have sight issues and are using wheelchairs and pushchairs. Sorry, we shall time. Can I just say, we need more of a carrot than a stick. This is very, very punitive and will affect town centres. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Eve Cohen. I fully support any initiative that will improve air quality and encourage people to walk or cycle, especially for shorter journeys. The increase in residence parking permits will not do this. Only those in the CPZ and with on-street parking are affected by residence parking permits. CPZ permits should be increased equally across all parts of the borough and future increases should be equal. We hear about the disparity between the east and west. Mitcham is very polluted, but how does this disparity in CPZ charges tackle pollution in Mitcham and the lower life expectancy in the east? The council is sending out a mixed message. Car park charges being increased during the daytime, but remaining at a low fixed fee for the evening. Does the council want people to reduce vehicle usage and improve air quality or not? Using examples of congestion charging successfully improving air quality in the document before you does not relate to parking charges. Charges should be based on the level of vehicle emissions. The diesel levy, as far as I know, does not take into account vehicles that can travel into the central London ULEZ without extra charge. How does this policy tackle pollution when it's not tackling the through traffic, including buses, which causes much of the pollution across the whole borough? Buses should be electric when passing through the pollution hotspots, such as local town centres and heavily polluted junctions. The walking and cycling experience needs to be made easier and better. Pavements and cycle paths need to be kept clear, clean and accessible. There are trees, lampposts, permit holder, holder parking posts, consumer boxes, wheelie bins, cycle boxes, bushes and hedges spilling over from gardens and businesses, low tree branches, uneven pavements, loose paving slabs, block drains and potholes. 
cycle route start and stop call it, start and stop calling. On the random way, the pavement is shared by pedestrians and the cycle path. The cycle path stops and starts again a few yards along. On the same stretch, there's shrubbery over the pavement beside Pizza Hut and it's impossible to walk on the pedestrian path. Pelican crossings need to change as soon as the button is pressed. Secure cycle parking is needed. Let's have some car-free Sundays. The anti-idling campaign needs to be ramped up. Join the dots and have all council departments working to the same agenda. Stop tall buildings that make pavements cold, especially in winter when the sun is lower, ice stays on the pavement. They create a canyon effect, trapping pollution and microclimates such as whirlwinds. An example being the old Brown Root Tower in Collierswood where it's dangerous to cycle paths due to the strong wind. New builds and extensions with no defensible space must have an out, uh, uh, off-pavement location for bins on collection day. Put cycle paths and walking routes away from main roads to encourage healthier journeys. Don't give preferential treatment to motorbikes, they cause a lot of pollution. Those that really need their cars for work, nurses, doctors, electricians, gas persons, etc. should have some concession made until such a time as they can afford to change their vehicles to less pollution models. Senior council staff, councillors, leader of the council, etc. should set the example and not impose regulations on others they are not prepared to follow themselves. Thank you very much. Uh, and councillor Nigel please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, um, Chair. In, in, in a creeping, um, parking out of it if, 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 um, finally, um, for, 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 for the, the, uh, the, the, uh, fidget, um, for, for, for the, uh, labour uh, uh, main station, which is unacceptable. They uh, chose to uh, tackle air um, quality by, by increasing um, parking charges for, for the modern uh, side of the board. However, there is no ever evidence that this, this game will improve our air quality. This proposal will we'll more than double the amount that, that, that we pay for parking permits with the current uh, 65 uh, pounds cost increasing to 120 pounds or 150 pounds depending on where we live in Moomoodan. What, what about, about labourers and uh, mission the modern side of the board? Why why they uh, little parking charges there? The, the uh, massive rise of the, the cost of parking charges is going to be a, a, sh a shock to many people. We, we uh, live in, in an outer London board where, where people um, are more likely to have cars. Some for the board do, do, do not have a um, car, car parking so, 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 they, so they will not be paying anything at all. I, I understand there has not been an, an increase in parking charges for a long time. What the proposed charges, which represent a, a double lane in most cases, is totally unfair. Just over the, the reason why in council tax. Over 3,000 people completed the parking con con 
Chris and his colleagues to respond to some of those points that were raised, and then we'll go over to the panel and carry on the discussion. Thank you. Well, I'll say a little, Chair, and then maybe hand over to, to Ben, to, to Dagmar, and possibly to, to Jason as well to answer some of the more technical questions. But it was very useful to, to hear that, and it, it echoed many of the points that came up in the consultation. Just to pick out a few of them, that there's clearly a theme about resident suffering as a consequence of this, and resident suffering in the West. Uh, potentially more than residents suffering in the East. What perhaps we fail to take account of is that the residents are suffering already with the quality of London's air. And if we do nothing about that, then they will suffer even further, uh, and the damage and the impact will be very, very significant. Um, and there's also a theme around, there's an awful lot more that we could do. Uh, and I heard that very clearly around more monitoring, around anti-idling, around those other complementary measures which we are taking in order to support sustainable transport and to monitor the air. And it's almost that excellence becomes the enemy of good. We are doing a lot and we will continue to do more. Uh, and some of these parking charges will assist us in being able to invest more in that sort of complementary measure. Uh, but not to take the action that's being proposed would be irresponsible in my view, given the challenge that we face uh, in terms of air quality. Uh, and that uh, the, the point made very clearly about um, children in the East and children in the West. What we're seeking to do is to set a proportionate and an appropriate charge for parking which recognises residents' access to transport 
And I know that it may well be that some residents in the West don't use that public transport, even if it's available, or do use it. But that's missing the point, that the availability and accessibility of that transport makes it easier uh, not to own a car in some instances in the West of the borough. Uh, and we're seeking to recognise that in the charges that are set. Uh, I'll leave you there, Chair, because there's probably other more technical points, particularly around the clean air zone that needs to be built up. Before I move on, there was one very specific point about staff parking, and I recognise that the Council is a big user of motor vehicles, but one which we are addressing right this moment in a very comprehensive approach to significantly reduce the reliance on the motor car and to shift staff who need a motor car at the moment or believe they need a motor car for the purposes of work to shift them to more sustainable forms of transport and to significantly reduce those who commute to work uh, in a borough that has significant public transport accessibility. So those steps are in hand at present. Just to give an update, uh, the establishment of the clean air zone is something that the council can consider. Um, we are currently doing a scoping report for the uh, board in Wimbledon. So this is uh, an area of concern, but it will be a phased approach. The first part of the approach is actually to wrap the vehicles in and out, which will be AMPR cameras, so we know what's going on in that borough. But that piece of work is actually currently going. Okay. okay, so that's that then. Uh, I'll move on to the panel. Uh, I'll go. I'll take Councillor Dean and uh, then Councillor Richard. Thank you. So a myriad of questions, but clearly we're not going to answer them all to start with. Tell me. Um, Public health then. So, um, just looking at these numbers here, could you tell me, in terms of uh, longevity, um, which wards do people die the youngest and which wards do people last longest? Yeah, um, I think it's not uh, a secret that um, there's a big east west divide in life expectancy, healthy life expectancy, and many of the determinants of health. Um, so if I pick up your um, scheme of thought possibly, um, the way we have been thinking about the public health impact is that particularly air quality really affects all of us. It doesn't stick to um, boundaries. And we're particularly concerned that it affects the very vulnerable, the very young and the very old. And that was um, in our main focus. So, so, so um I'm asking you a specific question. Uh, you say it's not a secret, but it seems to be a secret to people that put this together. Um, which wards do people die the youngest? And then the second question will be, probably not to you, is which wards are the most polluted? So the East Merton um, wards with the highest um, ill health and mortality are um, Fixed Marsh, Cricket Green, and um, the East Mountain ones. Okay, and tell me about pollution. Perhaps I can answer that. Every year we produce uh, what's called an ASR, an annual status report, and the current one is due to be submitted, I think, next Wednesday. Um, we've got the previous ones from previous years that show where the monitoring is and what the problem is in the borough. Um, generally, it's our um, major high streets, it's linked to cars and traffic. So, so um, and just, just in terms of, um, when I say the planning, there doesn't seem to be any air quality issues in Abbey or, or Wimbledon Park, according to the, well, that's very interesting you say this, I specifically asked you about um, air quality um, on Merriton Way, um, and I specifically asked about um, Plough Lane. Um, but tell me, in Mitcham High Street, for example, is the pollution in Mitcham High Street much better than it is in Wimbledon High Street, specifically? Do, and then the second question to that, 
is do people die younger? The people that grew up in Mitcham, are we going to die younger because of the air pollution? So two questions. One, the first one for you about high streets. The second one for you about do we die younger because we were brought up in Mitcham? The control parking zone. For all the compartment control parking zones in, in Mitcham are increasing Sorry. to the same amount. So, that's the answer to the report. That parking, control parking zones in Mitcham are increasing. And the off, street, street park. off street car parks in Mitcham are increasing. But as explained, the, the report recognises the variability of access to public transport. Uh, and it is easier to access public transport in the West than it is in the East. But the report does recognise that we need to improve air quality and we need to shift people from the use of the motor vehicle. And there are parts in the East which are uh, polluting and parts in the, or in the West that are polluting, particularly around South Wimbledon <coughs> and the Broadway. As you can see, I think it's on page. So I'll be saying that the health of somebody uh, doesn't matter if the public transport isn't good enough. No, we're not saying that. Right, no, but this does say that. Well, I disagree. Okay, well, I disagree with your point. Okay, I think that would be fair enough. So the next person I'll ask the question is Councillor Pritchard, please. Thank you. Um, first question is, what key performance indicators are you going to use um, to judge success? Can you explain what you I think the, the principal indicators will be air quality across London uh, and air quality local uh, and ownership of motor vehicles in the borough, uh, the take up of controlled parking zone permits uh, and the use of our car parks. Uh, and on the other side of the equation, the mode of shift, how many people are using cycling as a mode of transport, and how many are accessing public transport as a mode of transport. Uh, the second question is with regards to carers. Um, what consideration have you given to carers and uh, people who rely, or, and uh, key workers, um, um, who live in areas of the CTZs and um, how they will be subsidised. Okay, um, so the council in the region, I think it's 1100, I'll need to check that in the um, our free carers permits are issued primarily to those with a blue badge. They can request and ultimately get a free permit. Um, there are others that are in need of care and are letter from a medical practitioner or a GP for example, uh, they can write to us and say that that person gets regular visits and again a free open permit would be um, 
offered to them and the open element is any visitor that comes there can just take the permit and put it into whatever car arrives at the time. So we already have that uh, and that is to 1100 people um, again but it is it's something that we can look into. Um, that is there and maybe we can build upon that because that, you know, that did come across in the consultation. So that service is there and we will continue with that. And key workers? We don't currently have anything especially for key workers. Again, it's a recommendation that you might want us to look at. We can do, but um, it wasn't something that came strongly across the consultation. But um, take your comments on. And if, if I may, one, okay. if I may, one more just response to that. Uh, listening to Councillor Dean, was thought given, um, you, you've done correlation between charges and PTAL. Now, um, and forgive me if I've mischaracterised, but Councillor Dean uh, raised a fair point on um, there being a sort of blanket um, raise regardless of PTAL measurements. Um, if we followed sort of that logic through and we did a blanket raise and saw the CPZs um, and the car parking charges um, rise across Mitcham was thought given um, in, in the east of the borough, um, as Councillor Dean is suggesting, was thought given to that or, um, and, and how it might impact upon people? I mean, in developing the approach that's set in front of them, as we looked at um, a range of uh, approaches, you know, all the boroughs just have a flat rate increase, uh, and that's a very traditional standard approach. Uh, and we contemplated that, but thought that the better approach is the one that's set out. So we didn't model that a simplistic flat rate approach. Um, what we wanted to go was for something less blunt, something which recognised in fact east-west difference in terms of accessibility. Uh, and to test that out, uh, and look at the impact over time, and see whether that works, uh, and if not, to amend it appropriately. Thank you, Chair. Um, the report talks about giving people the right nudge, and so my first uh, couple of questions are on the nudges in this. Um, Paris 3.8 and uh, 5.43, it sort of sets out that the aim of this policy is to deliver a reduced car ownership and usage across the borough. And I wondered if um, thought had put in, been put into what the division there between reducing car ownership and reducing car usage and improving air quality was? We, we haven't put any specific measures in terms of the divine to be the proportion across those two now. Thank you. Thank you. In which case, I'd like to, to then come on to um, para 5.5, which is the additional evidence that um, this panel asked for and I think uh, has come back um, in the report into Cabinet. Um, there's a lot here in a 2015 uh, report about um, the impact uh, of, of parking charges. Um, I wondered if you might point me in that report to anything that was uh, about the impact on CPZ. I can't point to anything with regard to CPZ in the report now. Thank you. Would you accept that um, the, the, the CPZ is the mechanism to get people to completely get rid of their cars. Um, you pointed out that there's nothing in the evidence presented that indicates the, the effect of increasing these charges on, uh, the increasing CPZ charges on people's desire to have cars and that's sort of a fundamental point of your, you know, it's a key part of your aims in this report. So, the thrust of the approach set out is to use price as a motivator uh, for those people who own a vehicle uh, and in our, are in an area where they have good access to transport. At perhaps a decision point in the life cycle of their ownership of the vehicle, to think about should we continue to have that vehicle or the second vehicle? Should we consider joining a car club locally? Um, should we consider um, dispensing with the vehicle completely and, and using a bike. So it's, it's a tool which may not immediately have that impact, but over time, 
um, if the price measure is correct, will nudge some people, but not all people, to make a different choice. And I accept that that is quite difficult for some people in the life cycle of their ownership because there's a big capital investment in that sort of vehicle and the revenue cost is fairly limited. So once you've made that capital investment, um, the petrol, the diesel uh, and the permit price are less significant in terms of price drivers. But over time, and as you come to a point in time when you are thinking about replacing or getting rid of that vehicle, those factors do become more prominent uh, and helpful in nudge people to make that right choice. I accept that this is new territory and that's why the report points to the fact that we will need to monitor this over time and see whether that works. I don't know that some people will decide to pave over their front garden uh, and that's their legal right to do that. But some people will decide actually because of the benefits we now have around electric vehicle charging or car clubs which are growing significantly having a car, owning a car, and using a car in London, not just because of the cost, but because of the impact on the environment, will be the right choice to make. Um, and it might be a, a too small a price differential, it might be too large, but over time, we'll see the benefits and hopefully the impact and the improvement from it. One, one follow-up on in relation to that. The report cited says that the elasticity is low for or parking charges, which means that a, a very high increase in parking will have a, a relatively low impact on the demand for parking. Does it seem the case, as it does to me, that um, the elasticity will be even lower in relation to people giving up their cars and CPZ prices, in which case uh, you, you've gone to some lengths to set out how reasonable the charges will still be in relation to other boroughs, but is that not setting ourselves up for failure, and therefore the ultimate plan would have to be to rather substantially increase CPZ charges as well? I, I don't know. It may well be the case, but, but time will tell. Uh, and this is, to an extent, new territory, really. Okay, I'm just going to Councillor Holden first, because he's been waiting a long time, and then back to Councillor D. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, gentleman from Toynbee Road made a very good point that I've had, uh, heard many times from residents of my ward and hillside, and that is that a lot of these CPZs have existed for a long time, and the residents in those zones were told uh, it was only to administer the charge was only to administer the cost of the zone and enforcement, and it wasn't to pay for the things. And they're giving cast iron assurances from the council about that. Is it fair to change the goalposts after uh, down the years like this? And would the council consider allowing some of these CPZs to have a vote amongst their people who live in them to remove the status of the CPZs so they don't have to pay this? So I don't have the correspondence that was sent to those residents available at the moment in order to check what they were told, um, but I hear that complaint and that concern that's raised. But it is very clear that the lawful use of the funds collected can be used for the purposes that we're describing this evening. Uh, and if this approach is adopted, uh, and there is that variable charge for CPZs, we will be introducing a mechanism for residents to um, explore the review of those CPZs. But let's be quite clear, the CPZs were formed because the council was petitioned by residents for those CPZs to be established. We didn't go out and seek them. And the time zones were uh, formed on the back of resident consultation. Um, we will want to have something which uh, is in place in order to allow residents to a repetition and to ask for those to be reviewed and if they wish taken away uh, and that's absolutely fair and proper uh, and we'll do just that. Uh, follow up on the issue of fairness. Um, one, of the, one of the problems with this scheme is you've just dumped this report on people uh, quite suddenly without much warning because members of this, uh, in this chamber or the council weren't told until that a few days before the consultation started. Um, so one of the issues we've got is, what surveys or evidence have you actually sought from residents to encourage them to make the choices you want, rather than just punishing them? So I use the example of um, husband being with animals. You lead animals by the nose, um, and you bring them along with you with treats, or carrots, let's say. Um, you don't stand at the back and try and push people when they don't want to move, because uh, you're in danger of getting a big sharp kicking. So has any actual research been into what make people consider 
the, firstly, the, the, the consultation was trailed for, for some months um, in advance of the consultation going out and the consideration of the charges, the development of the policy uh, began last autumn. Um, and was well publicised uh, through my Merton uh, and on the on the streets of Merton uh, in order to ensure that we got the response, a very significant response. Hopefully there's nobody in any doubt that the consultation was taking place and we wrote specifically to uh, a range of civic uh, societies and residents associations and, and business organisations. And I accept coming to your second point that there needs to be a carrot and a stick. Um, and that asking people to pay more is not very popular um, and is bound to have a negative response. Uh, and that's why this policy is aligned with complementary measures which have been underway for some time to develop the transport accessibility, uh, the electric vehicle charging and the other opportunities for people to travel uh, in a different way. But we need to do more on that uh, and have some of this resource will assist us in doing that. Uh, and the TFL support that can further enhance the opportunities to travel more sustainably. And uh, we recognise there needs to be a uh, um, carrot and the, uh, some of the, the more stick measures. And hopefully we get that both of those. Thank you. Councillor Dean. Uh, I just want to make a couple of points. Um, point five, I mean, this is all about parking, not about driving. It was some bit about parking. <coughs> and uh, it doesn't help people get rid of their cars. I, I want a, a, a question about English. At point 5.21, a number of respondents stated that parked cars do not pollute. Then it says no car is bought just to be parked, it is bought to be driven. Is that second sentence a response from the council? What is that um, an observation from a resident? It's a response from the council officer. Right, okay. So um, he, they are saying that, but then the whole of point five is about parking. So um, that's my point. I can't see why you're claiming it's not about parking and then you spend all your time talking about parking. Um, I'd also um, like to make the, the other point here in, in terms of um, controlled parking zones. Just looking through the legality of controlled parking zones, looking at the words here, the controlled parking zones were brought in to regulate parking. But it's everything you said tonight is about regulating uh, the ownership of cars. So can you explain to me um, why your opinion on, on what it is and, and versus what this uh, document tells us? Is it about regulating cars or is it about controlling parking? So I refer you to perhaps the legal advice at page 32, uh, which sets out the Road Traffic Regulations Act. And, um, the specific functions conferred on authorities and uh, how we can use that act and the charges that flow from that act. And point E there under 8.2 refers to any other matters appearing to the local authority to be relevant. So we can use parking charges to support other policies, uh, is what that, that legal statement is saying. And those other policies in this case are public health policies. <coughs> so. What we're seeking to do is to use those charges in order to effect and accelerate our public health policies uh, and to improve our quality uh, and other public health matters. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just going to, because I'm getting a bit close to time, so I'm going to. Well, say, I have a question was answered by the end. Okay, so I've um, got to basically, I saw two hands go up at the same time, so if you want to have an arm wrestle, you can decide. <laughs> so, uh, Councillor Fair Clough, please. Um, I wanted to ask um, about the staff parking benefits. Um, I wondered um, if there were any contractual issues with um, some of those benefits and is that part of the time? So, yes, there are. Um, and that's factored into the review that we're undertaking. So some members of staff enjoy um, essential car user status by virtue of the fact that their job entails them to go out and appliances for adult social care clients, for example. Um, some 
staff have staff have components to respect to that, and what we're seeking to do is to review that whole piece to look at how we can get people to work without having to come, uh, without having to drive, but also when people are at work where they need transport, um, that doesn't necessarily have to be a car. It doesn't have to be a car that they drive in, and how can we get them to fulfil their duties without having to rely on a motor car? So have you got any, any time frames on that? So we're, we're hoping that will be concluded uh, in the next six months. We've got two uh, full-time project officers, one an HR officer and one a transport planner uh, working on that task and have been on it for the last month. Uh, and we hope to conclude it before the end of the calendar year. If I may, one very last quick bit on a different Yeah, really quick. Um, has there been any outreach with specific equality groups? carried out yeah, no, no specific engagement with any particular group. No. Brendan? Um, thanks, Chair. Mine is about clarity, because I'm not quite sure I'm getting this. Um, those people who have freedom pass, um, I know how it's paid for, but some people also have blue badge. So they're using both. So it costs in the council and government twice. Um, is there any way of looking at how we might manage that better? Um, yes, we can look at that. Um, I don't know whether there will be any opportunity to remove one or uh, either of those, but we can certainly look at that. Okay, I'm going to go to Councillor Holden because you spoke to quite a lot, my friend, as I'm sorry. There's lots of questions to answer. This is for the polls. Okay. Yeah. To the well, questions. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm about to ask one of those from the halls. So back at the February full council, the council agreed that um, the council would look at working with the Mayor of London TfL to clean up the bus fleet and introduce low emission bus zones in certain town centres. That's been alluded to by various speakers. Um, what uh, plans or what measures have you had or reasons have you had to instigate this so far? Because you know, we're now June, that was February. And the second point to that was um, part four of that uh, motion said to look at positive actions to improve air quality, which residents can support, uh, particularly for the use of the neighbourhood community infrastructure levy award allocation scheme. The um, problem with that is that some of the things that people would like to use um, that so-called funding for will be things like tree planting to help with air quality, but uh, there's nothing in the list of things you set out in, in that scheme that actually helps air quality one iota. And I think the nearest thing in that list is planting flowers. Um, everything else is more like painting things or fixing things. So can you explain uh, those two issues and why there's a particular hole in the policy? So offices in, in my department in Future Merton meet on a, a regular basis with TFL um, in order to look at all aspects of their operation, including the buses. Um, and I suppose we need to recognise that unfortunately TfL's financial position is, is significantly poorer than it has been in the past. So their capacity to be able to overnight invest in a clean bus fleet is significantly hampered. And I know the Mayor's Transport Strategy has a target of having clean buses, completely clean buses on London roads by 2041, which is far too long. Uh, we recognise that. Um, but that's their target, uh, and that's based upon their funded business plans that they are delivering. I am aware that Putney High Street was a very significant air quality matter, which required a very significant treatment. Uh, and whilst we would like that to happen here, and we will press for that to happen here, that will be a decision made by TfL uh, to shift their bus fit or to invest in that bus fit. We will continue to press for that, um, but I'm realistic about the financial challenge that they face in the business plan within the circle. With regard to SIL, uh, there's hopefully better news in that the SIL bids, which will be coming forward to Cabinet in the near future, uh, do include uh, some proposals for tree planting to help mitigate the damage that our poverty is causing, uh, and hopefully that will proceed. So, hopefully, some, some prospects of good news. Okay, Councillor do you have a question? Yeah, um, I do indeed. I mean, it's quite interesting that um, you know, TfL have let down the residents, but um, they don't do nothing about that. 
council uh, officers can have cars, but we'll consider that. Um, it's quite funny that you can't impose anything on, on, on those. Uh, and I'm just looking at these car parking charges. Uh, I could be wrong, but my kind of view is that um, people who live in the centre of Wimbledon do not park in the centre of Wimbledon. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. But I would suggest it's people coming from further afield. Um, but the other thing I also noticed, and I have an electric car, but so um, I want to add that in, but I can't see how you're uh, helping electric vehicles when I'm assuming they've got to pay these charges in car parks as well. So the fact is that the polluters, buses, commercial vehicles, are not being affected at all. Um, anybody that uh, works on the council side, on the resident side, currently not being affected at all. Uh, we have an incinerator which this council could have stopped with 110 metre high chimneys. And that was proposed and passed by this council. Yet the people who drive electric vehicles have got to pay for their parking. And, and it just proves yet again that this is absolutely full of holes. But I want to go back to a very specific question. If the air in Mitcham is beyond the legal limits, which I'm told tonight it is beyond the legal limits, then why is it that the whole of Mitcham, if we are talking about elasticity of demand for parking and for driving, if, and I think it's flawed, but your argument is that higher prices will drive down driving. There's a very specific question I want an answer to, and you are responsible for public health in this borough, is why you have done literally nothing, and I don't want to hear the answer that some CPZs in some parts of Mitch uh, Mid are having their prices moved up by at some small amount. If you believe in your principles, I want an answer to the question, what are you going to do about the filthy air in Mitch and tell me one thing that you're going to do? That's the answer. That's the only answer I need, actually. There is no. I'm not too sure who that was addressed. It's to everybody here that is responsible. If you are so responsible, which it says to me at the front here. Well, I don't, I'm not sure you did. The answer was the silence, which is what I expected. So, there are a number of things that we're doing in Mitchum to improve that quality, such as investing in the cycle infrastructure to encourage people out of their cars. Uh, so significant investment uh, along uh, the Corbyn Road uh, to in install the cycle lane uh, through the lip funding. Uh, we've also improved the quality of Mitchum Fair Green. Uh, we've installed more trees there to mitigate the impact of air pollution. Uh, and we are increasing the car parking charges in Mitchum uh, in line with this policy in order to encourage people not to use their motor. Okay, so we can finish start moving to recommendations. Are there any final questions? Final, going once, going once? Okay. Um, so, uh, in terms of where we're heading, it sounds to me as if there's some very clear things coming out of this. Um, the, the issue of cycling keeps coming up. There was, in the report, something about how we'd spent £4 million on cycling-related schemes, and yet there's been very little uptake in cycling. And perhaps we haven't been bold enough in our approach to that, and we haven't we haven't taken approaches like other councils have done. Not necessarily that, but um, so councils like Kingston or even Wolfham Forest who have gone very big on how they're trying to genuinely change people's behaviour. So, do we want to make recommendations around if we're, if we're trying to make people make the right choices, the healthy choices? I don't see much in the report about how we're going to do that. So. I, I, don't, I don't think that's the point at all. I think your point as a chairman of scrutiny in this panel should be that this council should not try behind, behind public health to uh, reduce the funding gap. It should be honest and say, we have a hole in our budget and we are going to make sure that car drivers pay for it and the car drivers who we don't like the most will be paying for it. And that is my proposal. Okay, I'll move to Councillor Holden. In terms of references back to Cabinet, this is normally good practice for this panel to make recommendations to Cabinet to consider. 
So I have two um, that I'd like to try, and the first one I'll do uh, first, and this will be officially uh, presented by me and seconded by Council Dean, and we'd like to have our names noted. Um, this panel does not believe that the substance of the report has changed substantially or materially since we last saw it in January. Therefore, we recommend that Cabinet scraps their plans to implement this parking tax. I second that. What do people think to that? Do you want to discuss it or do you want to move straight to that? Should we discuss it? Any thoughts? Okay, should we go to a vote then, please? Those for? Those against? Uh, okay, in your second one? Uh, okay, my um, second one that I've prepared beforehand. Uh, this panel recommends the Cabinet that Council officers proactively work with TfL and other partners to clean up the bus fleet as per the February Council motion and consider an aggressive green mountain strategy to help mitigate emissions in areas of poor air quality. The panel also recommends a more extensive rollout of electric charging points and that the council undertakes a promotional campaign to encourage residents to switch to electric vehicles. This panel therefore concludes that until these actions are undertaken, it does not recommend the implementation of the parking tax. Okay. Does anybody have any questions or thoughts? No, he has, we haven't got it written down for the one to see. Sorry, it was just quite long. Okay, uh, shall I read that out again? Yeah, that would be good, thank you. Okay. This panel recommends to Cabinet that Council officers proactively work with TfL and other partners to clean up the bus fleet as per the February Council motion. I and remember that motion. Can you specify that motion? Yep. So there is a motion at Council in February that says, This Council welcomes a focus on air quality in the London Borough of Merton and notes that this is a key concern of our residents. The failure of the Conservative government to address air quality is a key driving factor in the increase in life discrepancies, childhood asthma, premature deaths, and other public health emergencies, uh, particularly in London. This council acknowledges that significant action has been taken in Merton to address these concerns by creating an up-to-date air quality action plan, the majority of which have been implemented, the soon to launch policy on anti-island in the borough, with warning and signage already being installed, in production of electric vehicle charging points with our partner Source London, quite wording on this one. Uh, this council also recognises that the introduction of diesel levy in 2017 and the proposal to increase parking permit fees from April 2019 as effective to term actions that will lead to improvement in air quality in the borough. This council also recognises that significant action has been taken and, and is ongoing to work with school communities to limit air pollution beside schools in the borough. The new secondary school on the high path estate being a case in point. Council therefore resolves to ask the cabinet to one continue to work with the Mayor of London and TfL to clean up the bus fleet and introduce low emission bus zones in London Town Centre, Rains Park, South Wimbledon, Morden and Mitcham Town Centre, uh, e.g. as per the Putney High Street in the Conservative Club and Trial London Borough of Wandsworth, which has reduced NOx emissions by 87%. Uh, two, continue to monitor the air quality and air quality mitigations for the new secondary school, thus helping improve children's health. Three, uh, should the proposal be introduced, monitor the increase in parking charges for effectiveness in improving air quality. And number four, look at positive actions to improve air quality, which the residents can support, particularly through the use of the recently announced Neighbourhood Community Infrastructure Levy or Allocation Scheme. Thank you. Um, going back to the motion. So, so my motion therefore said, this panel recommends to the Cabinet that Council officers proactively work with TfL and partners to clean up the bus fleet as per the February Council motion and consider an aggressive tree planting strategy to help mitigate emissions in areas with poor air quality. The panel also recommends a more extensive rollout of electric charging points and that the Council undertakes a promotional campaign to encourage residents to switch to electric vehicles. This panel therefore concludes that until these actions are undertaken, it does not recommend the implementation of the parking tax. Councillor Yeah, so I agree with everything except that last point because if the principle of this is to use all the levers 
available to a council in terms of um, tackling poor air quality? Why wait until those good measures, I, I mean, I agree with you, especially on the um, conversations with TFL and pushing that and lobbying that forward, why wait until all of those have been satisfied through how many committees and how many measures that we can do here, sitting here for however many meetings, when we can do both at the same time and use everything in our power to do that, to tackle bad air quality in this program. Councillor Bridget? Forgive me if this is not the right process, but there seem to be um, four key recommendations that working with TFL, tree planting, uh, rollout of electric charging, and a promotional campaign, yes. right? Not all of them have been discussed in the course or answered upon in the course of the discussion. With Indeed, that's what I'm asked. Uh, and, and therefore, with respect to those specific four recommendations, I invite uh, Chris, Corbyn, Martin, and, and whoever else to say whether or not, um, give their views to whether or not they have been done, they could be done, and they are good ideas. Yes, I, I also agree with the points, but what I haven't seen is a time scale. And I think we need something to show us what is being done and by when, or what's the process. Did you want to respond? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so, as far as I can understand, the points raised, the, the, the criteria, the factors used, uh, are continuums really, they're not binary points, they're not points uh, where we will reach success and then stop. So lobbying TfL for improvements in the buses is something that is going to take us a long time. Uh, and uh, rolling out EV charging points, we are ahead of the curve in comparison to the average across London in terms of the number. Uh, we've got over 100 uh, and we'll continue to roll those out. But that will be a process which runs on for the next, probably the next decade, I would imagine, as the technology develops and we continue to install new EV charging points. So all of the points that you raised are in process, but I'm not too sure at what point you would expect us to reach before you would accept that the proposal set out in this report should be implemented. They are complementary, uh, and we are pushing those uh, measures as hard and as fast as we can. Um, but they aren't binding and they won't reach a uh, peak at any point in the near future. They will continue to need to be delivered. If I may, um, the work with TFL and the rollout of the EV chargers were the ones that um, seemed the most sort of obvious and, and I, I kind of working towards those things seems you know, desirable. Aggressive tree planting caught my attention because you, uh, it was specifically mentioned by Daniel that the, um, it was in the areas of highest air, uh, air pollution. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but the, highest, the areas of highest air pollution are, are high streets. Um, now, the, it's going to be pretty difficult to do aggressive tree planting in our high streets. Then. Um, now, I'm all for tree planting across the borough, um, uh, and I'm all for um, certainly those other two measures, though the prom promotional campaign, um, I, I think would have to be looked at and costed. Um, but has this been looked at before, uh, in street tree planting, and whether or not, specifically, whether or not planting in a high street has cost-effective impacts as regards to planting in uh, green spaces or other measures? So there's no doubt that tree planting can help mitigate the impact of air quality uh, and we are intending, uh, funding and committing, to enhance our street tree planting program. But high streets, particularly high streets which are red routes, TFL routes, um, are very challenging in terms of being able to put more things coming out of the ground on the pavement because there is already a significant amount of infrastructure there, both in terms of things under the ground and things above the ground, and TFL control that environment. So we will work as closely as we can with them to put them into uh, Merton High Street or other high streets in the borough. Uh, but there are limits to how far you can populate those streets with trees. Uh, and Jeff, 
just a follow up for, I suppose, for you, uh, Daniel, is that mindful that these motions are always subsequently later used as um, political measures that things are, part, are passed. Um, I've been on the off this many times. Okay. We're, we're here for the residents, actually. Invested in public health. The, um, the first and the third point, certainly I'd support it, is the second one that I have huge scepticism about the, the, um, the practicality of it. Um, so if you were to remove that, I'd certainly open it. Well, just a little point. Um, okay, I hear your points. Uh, we do have a third um, reference, slightly longer one that's been worked up with, um, with, with officers that hopefully you might like. And um, so you know, we can go through that one now, or we can just basically put this one to the vote and decide what you think of it. Because um, I'm of the view that I'm pretty happy with it as my one stands. Uh, and they think seconds it and they've got an to that effect. This, this, this is relevant. This is relevant to this panel, and this panel should support these things. This is not about politics. If we wanted to play politics, we could start mentioning that the number of trees... Okay, I think that's enough. Thanks very much. No, no, so I, I think, think it is enough. No, no, you're no, cutting no, me off. I am, because no. we have discussed long enough. And we no, you haven't, because I want to... Need to move on. I'm very specifically, sorry. the facts are wrong. The number of trees planted in the next year... I'm the, sorry. The, you you don't to want to hear the facts, do you? Well, I just haven't got time to, I'm afraid. Um, so this meeting is about we facts. Could, we, we could stick to propaganda. Vote and we could keep we'll stick to propaganda, shall we? There are less trees being planted next year, that's a fact. Okay. Are there any final comments? Can I give final comments? Or? No. You no. Said no. So I, I'm, I'm not allowed to be democratic. Mm -hmm. I, I've, you have, I'm so sorry, I've, I've let you I'm giving you, I want things. you to know that the number of trees planted in the next year in your budget is going to be less than last year. Okay. That's a fact. Thank that you very much. So you could change that. Thank you very much for your contribution. You don't welcome yeah. it, but thank so, you for answering that. Should we put this to a vote and move on? We do have one more one that you might like. Final comment though is that the my, my concern is not about tree planting, it's specifically within the, the, you were so specific in it mm. about the, how hyper local it was with regards to the areas. I, I have no issue with increasing tree planting. You know, we're a big borough, but it's about the hyper local nature of it mm -hmm. that you made in the point. The, the, the point has to be. I was the, thinking the, it comes to all right, well I'll tell you the point. The trees have to be where the pollution is, that's why I have to be local. Mm -hmm. Okay, well we could, okay, sorry, forgive me. So, should we just have a vote? Who, everyone else in favour? All those against? Thank you very much. Uh, we have <coughs> so, we could make a recommendation that we have a clearer outline of the measures that are being used to track success. And that way we can be a little bit more flexible in what those measures are. So we can look at things like increased electric car permits, overall um, applications for resident permits, cycle usage and air quality improvements. So we can do that. But we can also go, I mean, because there are, there are absolutely things we should be taking from this in terms of working with TfL, because if they have it, not going to give us the funding to make our train station more accessible, then how are we going to ensure people can have sustainable travel? And I think that that's extremely important that, that we, we hammer that home. So anything we can do to, for, to encourage the council to continue to work with TfL and put pressure on them is exactly what we should be doing. Um, so, yeah, we, we can do that. The problem with the aggressive tree planting, I think, is, is tree planting is great anywhere we can do it. So let's not be too specific about where it should be. Um, and uh, so, the, ch and the charging points, what's the last bit? I'm not afraid, Daniel, I don't think I want to keep the last part about, you know, don't do anything. Doing nothing is not an option, I'm afraid. I think we should do something whilst we can. So, to that end. Um, should receive additional evidence to demonstrate how public transport accessibility issues will be addressed and improvements achieved. So, um, uh, and then we can talk about, so the 
EIA Action Plan relies heavily on the uptake of blue badge, the blue badge scheme, but with 10.7% of Merton, the Merton population over 65 years of age and a further 1.7% over 85, it is not only the disabled population that will be affected by the increase in charges. Uh, how, we, how will the elderly population that can t cannot apply for uh, the blue badge scheme be supported in using sustainable travel and transport? as an alternative to owning a car, uh, are car clubs a suitable option? In the light of uh, the access for all funding not being granted, a number of Merton stations remain step-free, uh, remain without step-free access. The action, plan refers to, um, the action plan refers to working with TfL, but there are no substantive plans planned mentioned. So we need some, some substantive plans mentioned. Sorry. Um, I was going to ask, I've got two specific recommendations that are on slightly different issues. I think we seem to be moving to a consensus on a, an overall recommendation, so I wondered if I might make my two Fine. single ones and um, so they can be noted on. So, my first one, uh, I'd like to propose that the panel recommends that Cabinet carry out consultation with specific quality groups on the proposals, as we heard, and um, none has been carried out. And I think it should be left open to officers to decide. There are a number of equality organisations in the borough that could be consulted with. Any I'm so sorry, could you just, just say it again? Yes, sure. Um, I'd like to propose that the panel recommends that Cabinet carry out consultations with specific equality groups on these proposals. Would they not have already been in contact during the consultation period itself? We heard during um, during the, the discussion on this and the questions that um, no groups had been specifically consulted with, just a general consultation. But the, the whole population of the borough was contacted, so I, would assume, I'm not, I don't want to assume anything, but we would hope that people would have the same uh, access to the consultation as everybody else. There was no, there was no discrimination as to who received that, that invite to, to be consulted. Um, of course, Chair, um, the Equality Impact Assessment does point out there are um, potential uh, discrimination risks for disabled groups and for other people. Um, and I just, I just think it's worth us making sure that the groups that represent these bodies um, be approached again, because it is a very significant change. So you ask us to specifically consult with disability groups? So, so reconsult then, if you're saying that we consult with the group I mean specific in the sense of groups that represent uh, individuals with protected characteristics. That's the specific But we, I don't think we'd have time to, to do that consultation before the decision is to be made. Why, the decision doesn't have to be made. No, I know what you mean. Okay, quite fair enough. It doesn't have to be made. But I mean, by all means, you can vote it down. Yeah. I think what we could say, though, in the proposals we're putting forward is that we make we are asking here to specifically address accessibility issues, and I think that's reflected in any of this first recommendation we were just discussing. So that's fine with me. And I would just like to point out that the council has, has consulted with the entire population of the borough. So I'm, I don't think it's ever discriminated again. It's, never, it's not just prevented anybody from any particular group from being part of the consultation. I'm not saying it has. I just think it's worth. I'm proposing that we recommend that the they go back and consult with some specific with some groups that specifically represent those with protected characteristics. You can say no, I don't mean to extend this debate any further than we have, Chair. Um, okay. um, by all means, vote it down. Okay, should we have a vote then, please? So, uh, uh, all those in favour? Uh, those against? I'm not sure. Okay, fine, fine. So, um, okay, go ahead. Um, I'd like to recommend that the, uh, I'd like to propose that the panel believes that the evidence of the impact of the proposals on reducing car ownership is not made out and recommends Cabinet reconsider the charges, the changes to CPZ charges. 
Uh, well, the next part of our a number of recommendations we're putting together does kind of address this. So, should I just continue reading what we were saying before? So, okay, we'll vote on it. Can you read it again? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'd like to propose that the panel believes that the evidence for the impact of these proposals in reducing car ownership is not made out and recommends Cabinet to reconsider the changes to CPZ charges. Second this. Uh, all those. Yeah. Uh, all those, uh, would you like to vote, please? All those in favour? All those against? Uh, Chair, I know you don't want me to do that. One thing I would say about uh, pollution it comes from uh, combustion engines. Um, so vehicles are not always got combustion engines. Incinerators are not combustion engines, essentially. They're, they're very bad things. Uh, but electric vehicles are not. So just to be clear, it's not about cars. It's about cars that are combustion engines. Okay, thank you very much. So the next, uh, another part of our recommendation could be, uh, the panel also reiterates their original request of the 14th of January 2019 that Cabinet should receive additional evidence to demonstrate that increasing parking charges results in a decrease in, tra in traffic and on the link between higher costs for higher polluting cars and changing behaviour of drivers to date has this evidence been supplied. How does everybody feel about that? Uh, the panel also reiterated uh, their original request of the 14th of January 2019 that Cabinet should receive additional evidence to demonstrate that increasing parking charges results in a decrease in traffic and on the link between higher costs for higher polluting cars and changing the behaviours of drivers. The idea behind this one is asking the cabinet to um, stick to their original promise to this committee back in January, which was passed by the whole, I think almost by the whole panel at the time. I don't think I necessarily supported that, but um, uh, it was a very simple request, and we've not seen anything substantive from cabinet on this point. Uh, so, a third moment of regulation. Uh, could be uh, the panel welcomes the review planned six to twelve months after implementation of the new charges and recommends that the panel has an opportunity to carry out pre discussion scrutiny of the findings of this review. However, a clearer outline of what measurements will be used to track to track success, i.e., any increase in permits for electric cars, a fall in overall um, applications for standard resident permits, increase in, in cycle usage, air quality improvements. Yes, well, I, I think air quality is uh, something that is uh, a KPI for this council, and specifically in, in Mitcham, if it's at 64, and it should be under 40, then uh, if this policy doesn't address that, then there's a huge problem. So specifically, uh, when it comes to air quality, I think that should go to the very top, and there should be uh, specific objectives that uh, within the uh, polluted areas that the uh, air quality uh, is better than 40. And I don't know what that terminology is. Uh, I'm so sorry to say 40, whatever it is. But that's the very specific. If we are big on public health, and this strategy is there to deal with that, then I want to see that pollution uh, removed within the year, because the pollution does go within the year. Thank you. Do you want something uh, Yeah, just to check within that, the, so you, you you're measuring all the different um, ways that this policy could be uh, proved successful. Can I just check the, the modal shift element of that? So in terms of um, kind of reiterating that you have less uh, polluting cars, diesel cars, but also more electric vehicles, um, and then so, uh, measures of cycling, walking, yeah. <coughs> journeys, and things like that. Is that Yes, so it specifically says an increase in permits for electric cars, a fall, an, an overall fall in the application for standard resident permits, an increase in cycle usage. Is there walking journeys in there as well? I don't know how you it's, a, it's more of a, a such as, it's not necessarily a... a, a, a there was a capsule there for the Yeah. It's just not, the cycling one isn't quantifiable, is it? Sorry, Councillor Richard? I was going to say that the, the, the second one isn't quantifiable, but one that I think we've missed, that perhaps it, un, un, I might have missed, is public transport use. Now, we can, through people's cards, could get from TfL the number of public transport journeys and the frequency of public transport used 
within the para that is both external and internal. Um, yeah, I think we know. And, and therefore, that would give us an indication as to whether or not there is a modal shift. Good. Nice words. Um, yeah, from car to public transport. I think that's, that makes that fair enough. Um, and then finally, uh, the Power of Cleanse encourages officers to investigate alternative options to improve air quality and take a more proactive approach in terms of sustainable travel. For example, Waltham Forest and Kingston, who have upgraded their streets and road networks to help tackle key issues surrounding road safety, air quality, public health, and ease the burden on, pub on the public transport network. So the good thing about this one is a bit of a catch-all to encourage the cabinet to look at uh, more bold measures with walking initiatives, uh, cycling initiatives, um, things such as more circular site of storage, better lane signage, etc., etc., um, and, and possibly trees, but not specifically uh, where I stated them to be. Uh, so it's quite a general one to encourage them to think about this, because otherwise they won't. So are these commitments? Are these no. sorry? These proposals. These proposals are these commitments that we're asking this council to deliver on. Yeah. Yeah. The recommendations. Um, they're recommendations. not commitments. They're not commitments. We can't make. We, we, we can't, can't make. We can't make that. I'm not saying we should. I'm just asking you. Well, are these are recommendations I'm proposing we make to cabinet, um, and, and I think they they cover the things that we've been discussing today. Yeah. Does so, okay. mm -hmm. anybody agree with them? Mm -hmm. Forgive me for a process surgery, do we need to vote on that? Yeah. Can we vote on that then? Those in favour? Those in favour? Okay. And those against? No problem. So they wanted, sorry, it's your mouth and balance. Anyway, I think we've got there in the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so, Thank you. who was my second? Uh, Thank you. Okay, so we shall move on to uh, item five, which is performance monitoring. Um, does anybody else want a comfort break? Just because you know we never get, no one ever asks whenever I'm at the panel. Does anybody else want to know? Anyone? Continue then, please. Right, so item number five is performance monitoring. Chris, is there anything you wanted to say about the uh, performance monitoring before we kick off? Yeah, just a couple of points. I mean, firstly, it's very early in the year and you've got uh, quite a few gaps in terms of those measures that are quarterly or annual. I'm not too sure why some of the annual ones aren't in there because we've had the resident survey. Uh, and I would expect those to be here and I'll certainly ensure that they are here for the next time we meet. A couple of points on it specifically. Um, one, I'm encouraged by the waste recycling figures on page uh, 9, um, where the target is 14 percentage points above what we achieved last year. 
uh, which is very challenging, and we're at 43.9%. Um, that's reported a month in arrears, so that's in April. The new, new methodology is still bedding in. We've still got quite a few people who don't understand it or don't comply with it, so I expect that number to move north. Yeah, and that has a real beneficial impact in terms of uh, the environmental impact. So that's one. Um, so you've got some new indicators in parking, um, and they're on page 12, so you might want to have a look at those. Uh, and one which you just wanted to correct, which is the blue bank inspectors, which is a new measure uh, and a new area of activity where we're being much more focused around checking the validity of those who carry a blue bank. Uh, and that's been slightly delayed because we want the uh, body wall cameras and the process to be working effectively, but that will be getting underway in, in the next few months, much more robustly, uh, and we'll report on the, the outcomes from that. Uh, and then, before I close, just page 13, just to, to note uh, the continued good performance around uh, planning processing times. Uh, and just so, sorry, just one other point, just to go back slightly around fly tipping, because it's an area that constantly troubles us. Um, and it's on page nine. Um, the volume of fly tips are reported there is well in excess of what we anticipated. Because of that, uh, and for some time now, the earlier have, have uh, resourced additional vehicles and crew to deal with the collection of those fly tips. Some of those vehicles, in fact the majority of the new vehicles that they've got brought out, don't have the intact technology. And because of that, the reporting times are under-reporting performance. So uh, on page 10, you've got the percentage of fly tips removed within 24 hours, which unfortunately shows a very negative picture, whereas actually the reality is much better. Where it is reported and goes on to CLM and goes through to ECHO, but the vast majority are collected within 24 hours. Unfortunately, uh, the crews aren't able to uh, report it on their tablet in the cabs uh, on the day of collection, so it's missing that uh, threshold and therefore counts as a missed collection, even though it was collected in that time. And I can report that the performance is much better than that reporting that. That would answer questions, sir. Um, so um, your uh, department gave me some figures that the recycling rate in the municipal year 2017 2018 was 37%. You've said that, um, that your ambition was 14% higher than this objective would say 34%. Can you tell me which one it is uh, in, in a moment? Did you achieve last year 34% or did you achieve 37%? I'd also like to add the London Borough of Merton's Twitter feed from about July last year said that recycling would be 10% higher within a year, which I'm assuming is in the next couple of days, um, and uh, it's at 43.9%. So if you can just answer the specific question, are your figures correct now, or are, were your figures fit, uh, correct when they were given to me a month ago? Sorry, I haven't, got, I haven't got the figures you're referring to in front of me. I haven't got the figures for 1819 in front of me, but I do know that during 1819 there were periods when we were at 34%, uh, and we have a target which is 14%, ahead of that performance, uh, and our current performance is 0.1% uh, shy of 10% ahead of that 34. What's clear to me is that the service change that we implemented in October has had a significant impact on recycling levels, uh, and whilst um, the performance goes up and down during any year, and went up and down in the last year from, re from my memory, What's very clear to me is that we are performing much better now and it continues to improve and I'm going to uh, continue to push for that. Can I just add that what's clear since 2010 is every single objective that this council has proposed when it comes to society has been missed and uh, I'm not happy this council comes up with these fluffy positive things at the beginning of the year and uh, tries to uh, promote that as much as possible and then doesn't hit those objectives. The fact that if it was 34% last year, well in 2010 it was 36.4. So I can't believe in, in eight years, nine years, it's gone backwards. Do you think then for the performance monitoring, we should add some, perhaps like a, a, long ter a longer term view, so if we take it from 2010, so that we can track it as a group over, over years? 
my, my problem is the proposals I hear in full council are so rubbish. And, uh, but, but I'm talking about this. I'm sorry. I, 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 I understand that. Stop the rubbish. That, I understand Stop that. The just rubbish. so that we can monitor it as a panel, would you like us to try and add an indicator that looks at a longer term view so we can track it year on year? I, I don't want another Labour cabinet member to laugh when we say you're not going to be recycling. Uh, I don't care about paper. I I'm, care I'm, about okay, well, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking a question about how we can make this report better, but I'll move on to Councillor Pritchard. Thank you, you very much, Councillor Pritchard. Okay, um, mine's a sort of more macro point about key performance indicators that you've got listed here, and it plays to um, how the public and councillors alike can track them. Um, I agree generally that it's quite difficult to track year on year and when you've only presented one thing you're not seeing long term trends. So could we see that? Um, the other is with regards to these KPIs, are they, are they um, the same as what is fed into LG and form, LG and form plus, so it's publicly available so people can see how we're doing with these performance in, uh, key performance indicators on the LG and form website with regards to other boroughs or with regards to ourselves over time. So, so this is a, a corporate format and I'm certainly feedback to them the desire that we have a more longitudinal analysis so that you can see the trend over time. Um, the information you see here is published on the council's website on a monthly basis. There is a London-wide performance indicator collection process. Um, I'm not too sure whether this data is published on the LGA website. Um, I'll go back and check that, um, but this is certainly published on our website and is shared with London councils and others in order to provide comparatives with other London boroughs. The Audit Commission used to have a process of collecting and reporting on this nationally. That doesn't exist anymore. So the, the benchmarking of national data is often very service specific uh, rather than cross council in, in terms of its reporting. My fault. Just just following up on that, um, the LG Inform, um, I spent a couple of hours on this afternoon, it's great for the data, both longitudinal and geographical, it allows us to display it automatically in terms of what anyone would want, so if Councillor Dean wanted to look at separate wards, comparing it to each other, if I wanted to look at it over time, or it does it automatically for you, so that would seem a very good, and someone else is paying for it, um, mechanism for us and for all our residents to have transparency with what our data is doing across the borough, over time, and compared to other boroughs. I don't think that exists, does it? LG Inform does, yeah. But in terms of Merton, well, the issues with Merton is that the uh, lorries don't pick up by ward. And I've asked this a number of times about recycling by ward, and the information is never being forthcoming. The recycling by ward might, I don't know, I'm not sure of the data, but I imagine that the fly tipping and things should be. Oh, well, that would be, yeah. And that's what yeah, that's I'm, going, I'm generally about. asking across the data because we can't dictate <laughs> the data set to LG Inform, but what we can do is make sure that whatever data sets they've got, that we supply them as much as we can um, so that it's more publicly available. Uh, Councillor Beck. Thank you. I wanted to ask um, for a bit more detail on a couple of the specific indicators. Um, SP67 at the bottom of page 9, and also SP454 uh, on page 10. Oh no, sorry, uh, 407 on page 10. Um, so the first one is a municipal solid waste centre landfill, and the second one is FPM issues that we pay. So that number will um, go down um, because the vast bulk of the waste that was previously sent to landfill is now going to the energy recovery facility. Uh, and in time, uh, the only waste that will go to landfill will be the, what's called the bottom ash from the energy recovery facility. Um, so hopefully we will exceed and, and improve on that target of 10%. Because in the longer term, I know that the aim is to get that down to at or around 5%. Um, so, hopefully, that gives you some more clarity about that indicator. On the FPNs issue that have been paid, our performance hitherto has always been close to, if not above, the 75%. So, 
I don't know whether there's a slip in the month of, of May and so far this year with regard to that, um, which I'll be checking what the process is and the contractor have all remained the same. Uh, and it surprises me that uh, those FBMs, which are the tickets for littering and cigarette book disposal uh, outside tube stations and elsewhere, um, I'd be surprised if that um, doesn't achieve the annual performance target at year end. In terms of the, the value of that, if, if, if the contract breaks even, they're able to pay for the staff at or above 60%. So um, I will look into whether there's a problem with the, the process or the contract at the present time. Councilor? Yes, thank you. Councilor Bradley. Yes, thank you. Um, I just want to do it back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. I just wanted to go back briefly, if I can, to the number of flights it's moved in 24 hours, just to clarify that point that we're not, we're still not able, Viria, still not able to actually use their tablets to record those. Even though, I, from memory, the last time Viria were in front of this panel, they said that that would be implemented um, within months. Um, I'm wondering what conversation you had with them about that. So, so this is this problem is solely for those additional vehicles that they brought in they hope temporarily to deal with the significant increase in flights and they haven't got the technology in those cabs to be able to do this. The other vehicles, they're permanent vehicles they have, but not those vehicles. Uh, if we make those permanent, if we decide if they decide to continue with them, I'm sure that's that's what they'll do and invest in that technology. Sorry, there's been no assurances about those new vehicles. Thank you. Um, first, more as a comment. Um, so when you mentioned the energy recovery facility, uh, or energy exchange as I've heard others call it, for the benefit of the new members on the committee, uh, that's the incinerator, Benton Lane, if you're wondering what that was referring to. Um, anyway, so my main question is one that I've come across quite a bit on planning. Uh, so page 14 of this, SP380, number of backlog uh, planning enforcement cases. Um, this number always seems to be quite high, and I raise it quite frequently, and I have with James Beeney at this panel last year, this year, um, and when I used to be a planning committee, I used to raise it. There appears to be no demonstrable uh, improvement here, so please can you explain what's going on in the planning department, and I led to believe by them that they have at least once a month where the entire department works on clearing these. How come that's not making an impact? So, we are... This, is, this number is unacceptable, that's the first thing to say. Uh, and my expectation is this is down to close to zero by the year end. Uh, and to that end, we're finalising, Neil Milligan and James Virginia are finalising a planning enforcement action plan, which will need to put some additional resource in uh, for the remainder of this year. Uh, and we are actively looking to recruit some additional planning enforcement officers to clear the backlog. The current throughput with some tweaks and changes to the process and the performance management, we can handle the through. It's this constant battle that sits that holds us back and reflects very badly on the service that's provided. So with that plan, with that additional capacity and with some improvements in the processes, uh, my aim is to get that down to uh, a much more manageable number, so we can double figures by the end of the year. So we need to select a, um, uh, a monitor, a uh, performance monitor. Uh, Ben's happy to continue, but if somebody else would like to do it, then um, please please make yourself known. Oh, sorry. Okay, Ben, you're the camera. Um, but we do need some other tiles. Okay, so um, is there any way we can make the recommendation to get the, the data put on? to the LJ form? Yeah, it's an investigation as to whether or not there is any missing correlation and whether or not it's possible rather than mandating that it is because it might not be possible. So it, 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 the, this form isn't within my gift. This is a, a corporate performance management system uh, that's outside the real life. So I feed into this process. I can take that request back. Yeah. Um, but we, uh, work with LGN, No, the, I think there are two separate things. One was to do with the publishing of stuff for us showing longevity uh, over time. Sorry, 
And the second um, was just, if I was curious as to whether or not what, what we measure is the same as what everyone else measures and we maximize what is publicly available. So they're two, slightly two separate things. I, I think it's uh, as important because it is within the gift of this council that when contractors do not deliver on their targets, uh, that whatever the uh, outcome it is delivered. Um, because we don't have the information on the commercial contracts with Veolia and ID Verde, we don't know some of this, the objectives or uh, the uh, penalised, uh, how they can be penalised. But frankly, what I see here in terms of flight tipping and what I've seen monthly or weekly in terms of street cleaning, they should have been penalised. And I would like to see the figure on here on how much money they've been penalised per month over the last 12 months. That's something within the remit of this council. Okay, Can thank you it. very much. Okay, so, um, next item is setting the work programme. Um, so, did everybody get a chance to have a look through? Um, thank you to those who turned up to the, uh, to the workshop. Very well, I enjoyed it anyway. Um, so is everyone happy with how we've, we've laid things out? So we try to keep them themed so that we don't jump around too much from subject to subject and there should be more flow between topics but it also leaves room for us to add anything urgent that comes along. Um, we need to decide on a task group. So Rosie left you an amended uh, terms of reference for the economy one. Um, and I think you've all got the fly ticket one in the pack. So um, are there any initial thoughts on that? Thank you. Um, I just thought, given that we've actually got uh, scrutiny of the area, scrutiny review of environmental enforcement and apply, on the flight screen strategy, there's aspects of, sort of duplication of effort there, I think, what the panel is doing. So I might propose, in addition, we could also um, have a, sort of a rapporteur review of flight checking as part of, in, sort of feeding into that September meeting on flight checking as well, if that then allows us to do the full um, task group on the other one. Councillor Richard? Building on that point, I'm also aware that the overview and scrutiny commission is doing an investigation into those areas of just maximise sort of deconfliction, um, that we don't duplicate effort and waste limited resources in that we look um, at what they're doing um, and ensure that everything we are doing is timed correctly so we maximise um, what we look into and what resources we use um, because this is something that is obviously of concern so I just want to make sure that both of the two committees because they are looking into it and all these things work together in that work programme um, to ensure that we get maximum value for um, our limited budget when it comes to scrutiny. Do you want to say that? Yeah, um, yeah uh, that's a fair point. Uh, uh, one thing we always like to check on these is whether officers can help um, assist them or task groups, roles, repertory roles. Uh, so it's always worth checking that uh, they're able to commit to help that because they, you know, we, we do like to give them lots of work to do and uh, it's always worth checking. So over to our uh, switching officer. Would you like to join Yes. Coordinating rather than joining us. Yeah, coordinating various points raised, um, possibly um, you know, helping somebody go off and, on their own individual investigation. Yeah. Yeah, with that, that can definitely be done. I think the fairly standard procedure is that we'll, we, if in this case, we make it as a recommendation to the old view and scrutiny commission then that they consider it, consider after you looked into whether or not there's any sort of economies that would come through the coordination and then Julia can make a recommendation to the Old View and Scrutiny Commission as to whether or not a rapporteur is possible and the Old View and Scrutiny Commission will then decide whether or not it's them or it's this committee that will do the rapporteur. And I think that's a, a natural process for it. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we've got the Old View and Scrutiny Commission 
good. So, um, so the other task group is promoting uh, community wealth through local procurement. Um, does anybody want to speak to that? I think, um, I, once I understand um, why economy hasn't featured on the work programme, um, and only features in this one area. It is something that is a huge concern to me. Uh, not least because the east of the borough is um, one of the uh, most economically deprived areas in this part of London. Not least because one of the greatest sort of crises we're possibly facing at the moment is economic uncertainty with what's going on. Um, and not least because we're not implementing, um, we don't seem to be implementing the ethos of the one of the government's policy last year, which was the industrial strategy that you sort of buy local and promote local. Um, I, I think we should be looking at their economy. I think we should be looking at small and medium sized businesses, how we can report them. I, I think we should, given the uncertainty over Brexit, be looking at reducing the length of our supply chains to promote community resilience and consider procurement. I think all of these things necessitate us looking at buying local as much as we can. Um, that is not a conclusion, that is just a belief that is something that we should look into. And that's to me is the purpose of the financial task uh, sorry, a task group is to get that done. Any other comments? Uh, well should we vote vote on it then? So all those for the flag thing uh, task group. Uh, all those favour of flight again? Uh, and then all those in favour of the promoting community wealth through local procurement. Okay. 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 Okay.